Today I want to share with you how to make clotted cream. This is so easy to make and it's rich and delicious and perfect for topping on scones and biscuits. Hi sweet friends, I'm Mary and welcome to Mary's Nest where I teach traditional cooking skills for making nutrient dense foods like bone broth, ferments, sourdough, and more. So if you enjoy learning about those things, consider subscribing to my channel. And don't forget to click on the little notification bell below that'll let you know every time I upload a new video. Well, this couldn't be easier to make and it only takes one ingredient and the bulk of the work is done by your oven. What you're going to need is some heavy whipping cream. Now I know in different parts of the world this may be called different things, so what I'm going to tell you is that you want to look for a cream that has a total fat of 6 grams or more. So if you see something labeled light cream or table cream or just whipping cream, chances are that may not have enough fat content. And you can use pasteurized cream or ultra pasteurized cream to make this because I know some of you have told me all you can find is ultra pasteurized cream. So I don't want you to think that you can't make uh, clotted cream with ultra pasteurized cream. You can. Now, what about raw cream? Certainly you can use raw cream if you have it. However, since we are going to be heating this, you may want to save your raw cream for those preparations where you don't heat it. What you need to make clotted cream is some type of shallow baking dish. This is approximately 9 by 14 and that's a perfect size. If you have a roasting pan uh, or something along those lines that's shallow. And the reason we want sort of a large shallow pan is to give the surface area of the cream as much possibility to basically clot. So all we need to do is take our heavy whipping cream and just pour this right down into our baking dish. Now we're going to put this in a very low oven. You want it to be somewhere between 175 degrees Fahrenheit and 200 degrees Fahrenheit. The lower the better. If you're able to set your oven at 175 degrees Fahrenheit, You'll want to put this into the oven and you'll want to leave it there for 12 hours undisturbed. If your oven only goes as low as 200 degrees Fahrenheit, you'll want to check this at 10 hours. Now I generally like to start this early in the morning so that I'm ready to take it out of my oven in the evening. I know some people will leave it in their oven overnight. I'm not 100% comfortable with that, leaving my oven on all night. And also a lot of the modern day ovens, when it's set low like that, or even if it's set at any particular temperature, it may click off in the night or click off after a certain number of hours. So if you're doing this during the day when you're home, on a day when you can be home, you can watch and see if your oven does in fact click off. But in the evening when you're sleeping, you wouldn't be aware of that. So this is a project I really like to do during the day when I know I'm going to be home. But it's totally up to you what you're most comfortable with doing. Now, can you do this in a slow cooker? Yes. However, you need a slow cooker that really can keep a low temperature, maybe somewhere in that 180 degree Fahrenheit range, because I know it's hard to get a slow cooker to go down to 175, but if you can keep it in that 180 degree Fahrenheit to 200 degree Fahrenheit range, you can do this in your slow cooker. However, you need to be very careful with this project because you don't want it to boil. And some slow cookers, even on low, do run fairly hot and will boil or at least simmer. So if your slow cooker has a keep warm setting, it may work. So that is an option to experiment with. But for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put this into my oven, which I have set at 175 degrees Fahrenheit, and then we'll check it in 12 hours. Well, while that one's in the oven, I've got another one here that's finished because you can never have enough clotted cream. 
Well, after about 10 or 12 hours and you take your cream out of the oven, it's going to look like this. And I'm going to overlay a, a close-up picture so that you can see exactly what this looks like. It will have turned a lovely golden color. There'll be some crust on the top, uh, but it'll, it will be very jiggly. But don't worry about it. This is exactly what it should look like. Next, you're going to want to let this cool completely. Just leave it on your counter and let it cool. It should cool within about an hour. And once this has cooled completely, you want to take some plastic wrap or aluminum foil, whatever you have. If you use those beeswax wraps, you can definitely use that. And you just want to cover your bowl with, your, with the wrap. And then you want to put it into your refrigerator overnight or for at least 8 to 12 hours. I'm going to chill this and then once it's completely chilled, we'll move on to the next step and I'll show you how to remove the clotted cream that's come to the top. And I'll share what we're going to do with the liquid that's left behind. Well, this was in my refrigerator overnight and it's firmed up beautifully. I'll take a picture and overlay it. Uh, you might be able to tell a little difference from when we actually took it out of the oven. But now is the fun part. You want to get a spoon. I like to use a slotted spoon. I find this works well. And we're going to scoop off, carefully scoop off this top layer. That's our clotted cream. So all you're going to do is take your spoon and I'll take a close up video so you can see exactly what I'm doing. And you're just going to move, you're going to move your spoon gently across, picking up this solid layer. So you're just going to keep scooping off this solid top layer best you can. Don't worry. It's not an exact science. And all of that beautiful thickened gloopy cream underneath will come with you. And you'll also have this top as well. Now with this liquid that's left over, don't throw this out. This is wonderful to be used in baking. And you can freeze this and then defrost it when you're ready to bake with it, whatever the case may be. But wherever you have a recipe that calls for water, you can use the, the, rem the remnants, so to speak, the leftovers of making your clotted cream. It'll be wonderful. Now some folks like to leave their clotted cream very chunky like this. I'm not a fan of that. I like to make it resemble more what you can buy at those gourmet grocery stores. Uh, sometimes it'll be labeled cl clotted cream. Sometimes I think Devonshire cream. I'm, I'm not sure if that, there's a little bit of difference there. Uh, but both of those, if you buy them, they're very smooth and thick. Almost somewhere between a cross between like a sour cream and a, a cream cheese and they're delicious and so I'm going to take my electric beater and I'm going to whisk this until I can get it to that consistency that I've seen at those gourmet shops. So here we go I'm going to start on low speed. Well that only took about 30 seconds maybe and it just looks wonderful. Well now I'm going to decant it in some little containers here and we'll also give it a taste. Well, how glorious will it be to bring a couple of these to the table with a bunch of fresh scones? Well, let's give it a taste first, just straight out of the uh, bowl here, and then we'll put it on a scone and see how it is. Mm. <laughs> That's so rich and decadent. It's out of this world. It's, I don't even know how to describe it. It's not quite butter, but it's no longer cream either. It's just some wonderful lusciousness somewhere in between. Now we have to try it on a scone. Well, I had to go bake the scones, <laughs> but I'm back now. So let's take some of that magnificent clotted cream and top our scone here and put a little homemade jam on it as well. And let's see how this tastes. Mmm. Oh, that's delicious. Mmm. That clotted cream is so rich and glorious. Oh, you've got to try this. And if you want to learn how to make the scones, be sure to click on this video over here. And I'll see you over there in my Texas Hill Country kitchen. Love and God bless.